Hey everyone, today I want to do a deep dive on perspective for concept art. I'm going to use as a basis these four tutorials that you're seeing on your screen. Uh, the first of them by Matthew Zikri and John Park, the second by Modern Day James, and the third and the fourth by Charles Lin. Charles Lin is currently teaching at Brainstorm School. Uh, Modern Day James has a channel here on YouTube doing a lot of content, great content. I'll have a link in the description. And John Park is the founder of Brainstorm School as well as Matthew Zikri is an art director in the entertainment industry. These tutorials are part of a series I did on drawing for concept art. These are the 52 tutorials from the foundation group. I tried to organize in a way that is digestible for the beginners all the way to advanced drawing. So uh, you can find the link in the description as well for that video. But as some of you, actually a lot of you have bought those initial tutorials, I wanna deep dive in them and maybe we can go together in doing step-by-step. Step. Some of the tutorials I already did myself and some of them I'll need to dive in and really get uh, acquainted with the topics as well as practice myself the drawing. Let me know if that is something that you want to see here on the channel as well. So the five things I want to discuss today is that perspective is basically the beginning of everything. Uh, there is a great suggestion by Charles Lim to use IKEA photos and showroom photos that we're going to be discussing as well as the basics of what to look for in terms of perspective, as well as lenses and distortion. This is a big one. Uh, and finally, primitives, boxes, and construction using 3D as an underlay. As the fifth point, as always here on the channel, I'll add some other resources that you can take a look at. Some other videos will be in the description as well. And what about yourselves? What, do, what have you learned from this, especially those that have bought these tutorials? Please share in the comments. Let's create a community of sharing what you learned, what you uh, want to learn more on those topics, how it's going, how the difficulties of your practice, and so on, so that we can all learn together. So going into the beginning of everything, I wanted to use this image by John Park that I feel really illustrates the structure of everything. You can see that a lot of things are very boxy. Uh, you can see here uh, a box uh, and a as well as uh, other like very straight lines following the perspective. You can see the perspective going this way to a vanishing point, also here to another vanishing point and a third vanishing point down below. As the camera is looking down, we will have the horizon line up there and a third vanishing point down there. Uh, this is a little more specific to three points. You can get away with a lot only with two points, but you can see the construction even of those bases in here. Uh, they are very squared. Uh, the only thing that gets really organic uh, is the tree. It will be more of a cylinder. You can see a little bit of the ellipse uh, around here. Uh, and a lot of the features, the eyes will follow those ellipses. So it's a little harder this way. But other than that, you can really see that it's very squared out. A lot of the things that we're gonna be discussing today is around boxes and a little bit cylinders, primitives, uh, cones, uh, spheres, and so on. There are some inclined planes here, so stairways. Uh, so that's another thing that you can also go deeper and understand auxiliary vanishing points and so on. A lot of the things that I already discussed in other videos on uh, the topic of perspective and I'll continue to do so uh, going forward, there is a lot to be discussed on other videos as well. Another very interesting point that you can see here on the top is that with the preparation work, the understanding of what that place is going to look like, John also did a lot of exploration of thumbnails and what the scene would be in the end. Finally, 
realizing that into a fully fleshed painting, more on the style of Uncharted, Tomb Raider, uh, and all of that. So don't forget to practice. You can start with this kind of construction and understanding, even using plan view, side view, and top view to understand all the plays, how the player is gonna go about and walking uh, on that. Uh, I talked a lot about this on my videos, both using James Peck as a reference, as well as Gabriel Yeganian. So you can definitely plan your way and then build on top of that. There are There is also a great exercise by FZD. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later on, where they ask the students to design a room for a teenager as well as a fantasy room and two shots inside one of those rooms. So they go beyond only designing and go into thinking of shot design and how to use that in the context of a video game or a movie. But all of that starts with perspective. So using the IKEA suggestion by Charles Lin, uh, I wanna really dive deeper into what that could look like. So you get this kind of showroom piece. Uh, you first need to understand straight away where do you think the horizon line is. I think this is the first discussion of any shot that you're seeing. So something like this, because you can see a little bit of the convergence uh, from this line going up, as well as this line almost starting to come down and this line coming down as well. Uh, this line is also coming down, but this one you can see uh, it's going up. So the this gives me the correction that the horizon line is probably closer to here instead of where it was before. So this is a, a balancing act that you will learn uh, with time and get more accurate with that. And then you can start understanding all the boxes that you see on your screen and your uh, drawing. And that will be the basis of everything that John Park discussed on that first tutorial there, as well as a little bit of modern day James and the other ones go in depth more in the, the construction. So it's basically blocking down first and then goes into more construction. So I'll just make it darker so you can visualize it better. So the lines of perspective are very clear in the scene so we can start plotting them out. So the ones that are going to this horizon line over here, as well as the one that are going to the other horizon line, try getting the ones that are longer so you don't have a lot of mistakes. If you get those that are way smaller like this one, you probably get a lot of mistakes in terms of precision. So really get the ones that will give you more confidence that you're going to the right direction. You are the vanishing and the convergency is right. You can also plot a little bit of the tree points. And this is a po important point to discuss because most shots and photographs won't be taken looking straight parallel to the horizon. So uh, the camera, uh, will be like here and you won't be looking really straight. It will be inclined a little bit to the top or uh, to uh, the floor, to the ceiling or to the floor. So you will ha start having convergence both uh, below or above the horizon line and above the image that you're looking. And that is really important to start noticing how strong is the convergence below, especially when you have the horizon line, you have found the horizon line. Uh, if you can, you extend uh, this scene and get to a point, uh, making it smaller and getting to a point where you see all these converging lines connect to a point, the vanishing point, or on this side, the blue ones as well and you get the final horizon line, you can estimate that without like really finding the point because there will be a lot of precision errors that can throw you away. But really, once you have that, you can understand the relationship and starting to grasp more the relationship between if the horizon line is not in the middle of the scene, let's get a different color here. If the horizon line is not here, uh, it's 
like a little above. So what's the convergence gonna look like in terms of the third point that starts to appear? If the horizon goes below, then the convergency point will start getting uh, to the top. And it depends really on how low or how high the horizon will be that the convergency will be stronger or weaker. So this is something that you really need to start wrapping your head around because when you're building those uh, grids that John Park discusses on, on the tutorial, you really need to know how strong the convergencies are gonna be. That will also have a relationship with the lenses that you're using. So if you're using a fisheye lens, it will start even uh, getting circular. But if, if not, it will get really distorted and those uh, even the, the two points, and we're going to discuss a little more uh, of that, the two point convergencies will also be really distorted and really strong. When you get a telescopic kind of lens that you see uh, really close to the horizon line, then you have perspective really flat out and it will be really weaker. The, the angles will be closer to the horizon, closer to horizontal, and the whole overall convergency will be weaker. But we'll get there uh, in a bit. I have some examples to discuss as well. So moving forward, we can also use the carpet here uh, as uh, a convergency line. Uh, not always this carpet will be perpendicular or parallel to uh, some of those lines. So be aware of that. You can start having a, a system where you have multiple vanishing points, multiple systems of two vanishing points. So the angles will point in different directions. This is really uh, easier to see in the chair over here. The chair is not parallel uh, to the overall uh, construction of the room. So it's positioned in a different direction and that will really need as well as this tray uh, over here that is in a different direction from the overall room. So you start getting a grasp of those angles as well and how they're going to work. We're going to see that there are a little bit of mistakes I did there. So we can start plotting in uh, the boxes for the room. Uh, so everything in here is very boxy. You have the sheets over here that will be more organic but overall everything is very squared out very boxed uh, there are some situations here as i said that the boxes will be pointing in different directions and here is where you can do a little bit of a mistake as the chair legs are really close to each other there will be mistakes in terms of the precision and convergency so if we look back here, it seems even to be a little inclined. Those lines are not going to the same horizon line and that's a problem. Uh, you can plot that out wrong. So it will probably go more like uh, something like this. Uh, so it's a little bit on the precision there. So it gets to the horizon line that we discussed before. So this is something that you get with uh, more and more studies like this. Uh, so if we throw the lines on top of there, uh, we can definitely see uh, the mistake clearly, but we can see a little bit closer to what John Park was discussing and the overall construction of this room. Uh, we can plot out the rest of the room if we want uh, and, and look a, a little more, uh, but basically we have a basis to build on top of. And I'm going to discuss as well some other ways and some other exercises, both from myself as well as other structures uh, coming up. So let's look at what I said before of being closer to the camera or far away. So if we have a box like this, you can see that the convergency is really strong. We have both vanishing points in our picture, in our paper. So if we want to fit everything inside our image, inside our frame, we're probably looking at a high angle fisheye lens. So we'll get everything in there and we'll start having this very strong distortions of 
parts that are getting closer to the viewer. If we go a little further away and we want to really look at it as closer to the human eye, we'll probably have something like this, that one horizon, uh, one vanishing point is in the frame and the other one is far away outside. So imagine this as your piece of paper and you're really looking at that construction in a more natural way. So this is closer to what you've seen in John Park's tutorial as well as the other ones. And if you get way closer, so this box is way in the back and we wanna look at that really close up. So we want to have uh, something like this in our drawing. We can see that there will be, uh, the convergency will be way weaker and the lines will be way closer to horizontal. So you can almost not see the perspective. If you want to get as close to that, you need more of a telescopic kind of lens, uh, 150 millimeter or, or something like that, 120 millimeter, or even more if you want to get closer and closer to the scene. The same will happen with the third point, as we discussed before. This is a horizon line way in the middle, but if we get uh, the horizon line above or uh, below, closer to the top of the or the bottom of your frame, as well as outside your frame, you can have the horizon line way above or way below your picture plane. So that will really affect the strength of convergency of those lines. So really be aware of that and study photographs so that you have a better grasp and can create grids from your imagination as we've seen in those tutorials. But if we get back to really close to the camera, uh, it's a point where we'll start having more of a fisheye convergence and having more of a circular uh, construction. So you can see here this drawing by Kim Jong Gi. Uh, you can see a lot of lines bending because he was trying to convey this more fisheye lens that is get everything on the picture, but it's starting getting to a, a five point, sometimes people call five point, sometimes circular perspective, uh, and you have a lot of different vanishing points both above your horizon line, below your horizon line, as well as on the horizon line itself. And another interesting example is the artist Paul Heaston. Uh, he also does a lot of this fisheye constructions where you can see a lot of the environment, but very circular lenses. I'll have a link in the description for his Instagram as well, so you can check that out. So here are some more examples for you to really understand what you're looking at. So you can see very boxed uh, shapes all across. You can see uh, here, um, you can start having a little bit of the grasp of the overall perspective that we were discussing. Where is the horizon line in here? We can see the, the lines that are closer to being horizontal. So the horizon will probably be somewhere in there or uh, even a little more as we start getting a convergence uh, down in here, as well as in here, we can start understanding where is that becoming flat and the others are going down. So we can really have a grasp of where the horizon line will be and the type of convergence that we have and then what type of lenses are we using. So here the convergence is really strong. So when you're getting more of the scene, probably the lenses are below the 50 millimeter. That would be the human, uh, the equivalent to human eye. So you can see a lot of those convergences in here and you can have a little bit of a grasp of where the horizon line would be, probably a little lower than that, as we have this part that is really close to a horizontal. Um, so somewhere like here. Sometimes be aware that the, horizon line can be a little skewed as well. Sometimes the camera won't be on a tripod, so it won't be like really 
parallel to the ground and it will be a little inclined, especially if it's in, in the hands of someone. So you can have the horizon line a little skewed like this and you have to correct for that. Uh, you can use that to your advantage if you want to give more dy dynamic feeling for your drawing. Uh, so that's interesting as well. If you're drawing a boat or something like that, you definitely will have a kind of, uh, you don't need the skewed horizon line, but you can have, but you also can have a, a skewed incline uh, overall room. If you are in a boat, sometimes it will be inclined. So a lot of different combinations. Uh, once again, here in the kitchen, you have a lot of cylinders as well on those vases. So we can start getting more and more complex as you've seen in Modern Day James uh, tutorial that he starts like cutting, bending and modifying a lot of the, those simple primitives to build on top of that. John Park also does that. So it's really interesting to get a lot of those tools in your tool set so you can start breaking some of those uh, very boxy shapes and get more and more comfortable using ellipses uh, and, and uh, spheres, uh, a lot of ellipses in here uh, as well as in here. So you can have a, a big variety. I love bookshops as well. So this is from the internet, but really interesting. You can start to see that the camera was looking a little down because you have more of a, a three point perspective uh, and the convergency down below. Uh, but it's very subtle as well. Uh, so you can see here uh, that it's it's not very strong. And when you're drawing, sometimes we tend to do this kind of convergence is very, very strong. The horizon line is probably just a little bit to the top here uh, and not in the middle of the page. That's why we're having a little bit of that. And probably this is a handheld camera. So you have a little bit of a skewed horizon line as well. So have that in mind, that will be super important. So jumping into some of my examples uh, over here. Uh, so these are some I did using John Park's tutorial. So trying to build some of those scenes, it's really hard. It's frustrating to some extent when you don't have uh, a good grasp of you, what you want to make and when you don't have a good grasp of what you're building in terms of convergencies and what the scene is gonna look like. So uh, I, I got frustrated here. Uh, it, it, this is way back, uh, probably six years ago. But be aware of those difficulties. Uh, they will come uh, and just get through them. Uh, I really encourage you doing that or getting simpler, getting some of the IKEA photos. I didn't have that tip at that time. So it would be super helpful to try and deconstruct some of those rooms and scenes before doing my own. Uh, I think that would be really, really huge. And I didn't do that. I did some drawings of my house, but I would also do more of that. I have two videos here on drawing around the house, drawing rooms, drawing objects and all of that. I think that is also a really helpful exercise to build on top of everything that we're discussing here. Also, this is a demo I did for students back in the day using a very constructive approach as we've seen with Charles Lin and as well as we'll see with Gary Meyer. A, a lot of that comes from Gary Meyer as well in his DVDs at Nomon. He's always uh, also teaching at New Masters Academy nowadays. So a lot of great content. I used a very constructive uh, way, looking at things from uh, a plan view, so top and side view, trying to understand this scene from uh, this concept art actually from The Last of Us, breaking that down and drawing it from uh, a, a different angle. So it's interesting that you, you have to break down what you're seeing in a way that is digestible enough so that you can build that in a different uh, direction. And also, this is another video I have here on the channel, constructing these, constructing and discussing this scene. Uh, so a lot of what we've seen before. So boxes, convergency, uh, the scale here was one of the biggest mistakes. So trying to understand and get control of your scale uh, will be really important so that you have the sizes correct. Uh, the door here, I, I, I think, uh, is a little wrong and we'll get 
the overall feeling of the scene wrong. But we'll discuss a little bit of uh, 3D and, and perspective, its relationship as well, and it will definitely be helpful. If we look at Gary Meyer, uh, it's good that we saw mine before Gary Meyer because uh, after that would be harmful. <laughs> But he is really a master. This is a Nomon DVD where he constructs uh, all of this using a more uh, rational approach, not focused so much on observation, uh, but and really measuring uh, all of those sizes and all of that. But it's a really good way to get a hold of what you're building and understanding the overall place. Uh, I really learned a lot from this tutorial. You can find some of this stuff on uh, New Masters Academy as well. I've talked about this on other video. I've learned most of what I know on perspective from New Masters Academy. So I'll add the link to the description as well. It's definitely worth your subscription. You will learn a lot from them. It's very step by step. So going back to some of the primitives and bending that we uh, talked about, this is, I think, the best tutorial on this uh, from Modern Day James. is the second on that series. But this is where I think 3D will be really helpful. I did also a video recently on 3D tutorials. There are some other ones, even from the foundation group, that could be really helpful at this point. Uh, but I wanted to bring to the discussion uh, FZD and uh, some exercises they have for the students. So they need to build this room in 3D. It's a teenager room with a very strong theme. Uh, so like this is 80s Korea and, and so on. Uh, Sometimes it's like a, a baseball kid or something like that. So you can really understand the usage of the 3D. I'll add a link to the description with a blog post with way more examples on this. And then once they have done this and they have built the scene and drawn and get to a final product, they have to go in and do two scenes inside this environment. So it will change the perspective. It will change a lot of stuff, but you have the basis. So it's easier to draw the final view, but it will be also helpful on composition and everything we saw with John Park in the beginning of the video. So last but not least, uh, I've discussed this a lot. Those are the two books that helped me the most throughout the journey. Uh, I think Frame Perspective 1 really goes in depth on what we're discussing here, building grids and building places, environments, scenes, complex scenes, putting furniture on that, putting uh, cars, having a little bit of the distortion that we were discussing as well. You can see here on the cover of the book. But how to draw is really important on constructing objects and getting really complex with cutting, bending, and uh, rounding your uh, boxes so that you are primitives as a whole. Cylinders, it goes into wheelbases of cars, so it will use a lot of cylinders. So it's really helpful to have a grasp of all those primitives and put them into more complex settings. We'll get back to discussing there, that as well when we get to dynamic sketching. There are also other great books on perspective. I'm doing a video as well on other suggested material. So you can find that probably on the channel when you're watching this or it will be out uh, soon. So I hope this was informative. I hope it really helps jumpstart this journey through all those tutorials that we've seen. Uh, thanks for following the channel. Thanks for getting to the end of the video here as well. I hope you have great learning journeys. Don't get as frustrated as I did at some points, but if you do, please come back and share your frustrations here. Maybe someone that is studying can help as well and we can all grow as a community. Have an awesome day, awesome studies, and we'll definitely catch up on other videos. Bye.